everyone, it's Kelsey from East Hills Library and this is another video for First Chapter Friday. For this video, I am going to be reading from Admission by Julie Buxbaum. Porch, seven men spread out in a line, all wearing black bulletproof vests, lettered like my pants, although theirs say FBI, not WVHS, of course. Guns pointed in the way that you see on television, two-handed grips, serious faces. This must be some sort of joke, I think. My mother's 50th birthday is coming up, though she has so far refused to acknowledge it. Partly because according to IMDB and Wikipedia, she's only 45. The only reasonable explanation for the scene in front of me that I can conjure up on such short notice is this, it's a gag. These men are strippers. As soon as my mom makes her grand entrance, cheesy techno music will start blaring and they'll all do that one piece tear off, a choreographed move down the line like rockets. Aunt Candy, my mother's best friend, is exactly the sort of person who would think sending FBI strippers to your door at 6.30 a.m. is hilarious. When she had a colonoscopy last spring, she blew up the black and white picture of her poop-flecked insides, had it expensively framed, and sent it to us as a Christmas present with a card that said, now you know me inside and out. My mom hung the photo in the guest house bathroom, and if you didn't know any better, you'd think it was a modern art masterpiece and not what it really is. Proof that Aunt Candy is literally full of crap. Can I help you? I ask, smiling despite the hour. Because it's still funny, this before moment, when I think that I'll get to see these semi-handsome, muscly men undress and dance. When I still believe they're carrying toy guns and not semi-automatic assault rifles. When my default was friendly, not defensive. We're here for Miss Joy Fields, they say, and at that exact same minute, I hear my mom exclaim in a panic, you weren't supposed to answer the door. My mother, Joy Fields, who you probably already know was Missy, the surrogate for the two gay dads on the long-running odd CBS sitcom, My Dad, My Pops, and Me, or more recently as the Queen in Blood Moon, the royal vampire show on the CW, is an actress, and therefore, I don't react when I hear her nervous voice behind me. She's won six People's Choice Awards, she can weep on command, and sometimes she speaks with a British accent just for fun. Which is to say, my mother can be a little dramatic. Then again, as the world will learn mere minutes from now, I can be a little oblivious. What's going on? I ask. Go get your father, she says, and she puts her arm out straight across my chest, like she does in the car when she has to short stop. A reflex to protect me. Her hair drips water onto her shoulders, and when I see she's not wearing any makeup, that she's run here straight from the shower and hasn't even stopped for under eye concealer, it hits me, finally. This is not a practical joke. This is real. Just give me a minute to get dressed first, my mom says to the man in front of her, like she knows exactly what is going on. Like she's not surprised that they are here, only that they are here this early, slightly ahead of schedule. Ma'am, the guy in the center says, in a surprisingly mild voice, and he does a hand signal thing to the others that obviously means put down your guns, which they all do, all at once, as synchronized as the rockets, a bizarre version of my original imagining. I feel a sudden relaxation in my body. At some level, I must have known that these were actual weapons with bullets, and that they were pointed, if not quite directly at me, then close enough. Someone can bring your clothes later, no problem. Please hold out your wrist. I have a warrant for your arrest. You have the right to remain silent. I don't hear all of it, but I can guess what he says because I live on this planet and have therefore seen law and order. Isla, who despite being one year younger, is always one step ahead, must have been standing here at least part of the time because she's the one who fetches dad. He comes running in his pajamas, a t-shirt we bought him as a joke last Christmas that says, master of the universe. The tabloids will have fun with that too and fancy pajama pants from Spread Siegel, crisp and paisley. He has a phone glued to his ear. I can't imagine who he could be calling. Not 911, cops are already here. My mother is led to a waiting car and they do the hand on the head thing which, while she ducks into her seat. And for a second, before I remember what's happening, even though they are gentle, I wince. My mom hates anyone other than her stylist touching her hair. She's convinced that she's thinning at the back ever since an unflattering paparazzi shot of her scalp exposed on a windy day was featured on the cover of Star with the headline, Inside Missy's Cancer Scare. 30 seconds later, my phone beeps in my pocket and a New York Times alert reports what I've witnessed in real time. The headline, Joy Fields, sitcom star, arrested on multiple fraud charges in countrywide college admissions scandal. And that's when I know this is all my fault. <laughs> 